very difficult and at the ultimate level of non-violence is as far as the body is concerned is an impossibility because whenever we breathe we kill so many germs whenever we walk we kill so many germs we feel we build beautiful buildings for ourselves by destroying millions of insects that have been living there for many years we don't think of it at all so there is violence how to minimize this violence again i said abhyas avairagya gradually you go on reducing your violence violent actions to become totally non violent less and less harmful i would like to put as harmless so if you have to become more and more harmless what should happen you should become more efficient more efficient means what you do less down less damage in order to sustain yourself so your consumption your activity you all confine it to less and less consumption so that you become minimized there is a level of minimum very minimum level of harming because that is why in the upanishads it speaks every human doing it being does five types of sins which is inescapable what it starts with is to live you have to eat food has to be produced so you till the land you destroy so many living systems then you grow it when you grow the plant you have to preserve it therefore you do insecticide pesticide what not that for that's a second sin then when it is very ripe you cut it that is third and then the cut product is brought in to your place by transport while transporting many things are possible and then those grains which are capable of producing millions of grains you put it in hot water boil it and say how tasty it is and you get it eat it so five sins these five sins are inescapable no need to substitute the sins along with that there are four these five sins are inescapable suppose i say i will not eat even if i die that is himsa to the body that you can't do so because you are responsible for your body because you are a person who is not the master of your body yet why you are not a master because you have got five debts in life as soon as you are born you are already borrowed which you have to return then alone you will be free so what are those five debts you know one is devarana rishirana pitrarana uh or four samajarana there are four debts so devarana is even before we are born nature has got bounty of water air food for you to be sustained in life you when you born and when you live you consume it so you owe to nature something which you have to return nature gave you freely but you have enjoyed it but you have to return it then you are born to your parents who have brought you up whatever be the future you may run away from the house when you become an adult but still for that long time of childhood it the child is maintained the parents can squeeze the head of the child born but they don't they bring it up with the hope it will be better who knows what happens say so for you owe a debt to your parents then when you when you start growing old there is an education system there is a teacher standing there having all the knowledge consolidated giving you in capsule form so that you can have all the knowledge of the world at your command so you owe it to your teacher and then these structures houses hospitals colleges institutions and when once you pass through the institution job opportunities and products for you to enjoy all these things are governed by a government 
somewhere. So you owe it to the society which has provided it even before you are born. So these four, if you don't pay back, your body is not your own. So what are, how do you pay back? The nature you pay back by returning what you have consumed. So you enrich nature so that whatever you have utilized can be brought back in nature. Not only that, nature is not your personal property. Nature's property is also for future generations. So you cannot consume all that nature provides in your generation. You have to leave off nearly three-fourths for the future. So that much responsibility you have around for nature. You have to restock, you have to preserve for the sake of future. Parents, parents, when you were child, they looked after you. When they become old, they become childlike. They have need protection. They need support. They need help. Then you have to give it. And on top of it, one more ad, the ad ad is there. One who speaks of it. That is the main thing. You have to, your parents brought you up with great difficulty when you were born. You produce your own children, bring them up better than your parents so that they can say, oh, you have brought up your, my, my grandchildren are far better than you people are. <laughs> so that, that is, is the main thing. That's not the secondary one. So sir, the third. You have to have it, the future generations. That is the third day. And then uh, the, no, the, the teacher, how do you, there is no intellectual property right? Because you gain that new knowledge because of the past knowledge which has been given to you free. So what you have to do is you have to hand it over to the next generation. It doesn't matter if you charge for your sustenance to transfer. You should not make the idea as a business proposition for exploitation. So knowledge has to be transferred from generation to generation by improving it. And fourth is the samaja, the society, that you have to give some amount of your time for social service so that the problems of the society can be solved. It may not be all the problems we cannot solve, we should not. Because if we solve all the problems, the next generation will have to search for problems. <laughs> without, problems. without problems, you will not be happy. <laughs> if you provide the child with every toy you, it wants, then also it is miserable. It thinks of some other thing that it wants. So in the same way, we are all children. So solve as many problems as possible in your generation so that problems need not be handled. So this much if you have done, then alone you are eligible, free to handle your life and if, as you want. So ahimsa, and then the next one is satya. 